Hello everybody, welcome back for another video. Hope you're all doing well and that you're all having a great day. A lot of crazy news. I know I say that all the time, but the news keeps getting weirder and weirder. And without further ado, let's jump right into it. The price of a single Bitcoin almost reached 16,000 US dollars as traders assessed a combination of supportive macro catalyst one of them was at the federal open markets committee or fomc november meeting on thursday the federal reserve chairman jerome powell reiterated that the worsening 19 poses extreme risks for the u.s economy he also expressed concerns about the exhaustion in american household savings after the dissolution of earlier stimular, stimular, earlier stimulus relief measures. Um, before we move on, um, people are broke. And I don't mean that as an actual joke at all. A lot of people do not have money. And there seems to be no relief in sight. A lot of the people who previously months ago were getting some type of a, a, a job loss supplemental pay kind of thing. Uh, that money has run out. Uh, the $1,200 that people got in that little tiny check has also completely run out. If you do happen to have a job right now or something that is bringing you in money, count your lucky stars because there are tens of millions, if not hundreds of millions of people right now who do not have that at all. Um, Mr. Powell pledged to keep supporting the economy by maintaining benchmark interest rates near zero for at least three years. Meanwhile, he also proposed to make upward adjustments in the Fed's asset purchasing program. The bank currently buys $120 billion worth of treasury and mortgage-backed securities. These statements stressed the U.S. dollar. On Thursday, the greenback fell by almost 1% as talks, as talks of more central bank spending threatened to hurt its purchasing power. Its dip prompted investors to seek opportunities elsewhere with Bitcoin emerging as an ideal candidate thanks to the consistent uptrend since the previous two weeks. Bitcoin has been performing extremely well. There are probably about a good three to five factors, maybe just one to three of them actually being a main driver. A lot of people, I'm seeing a lot of articles as well. People are slowly coming to realize that there's not a lot of Bitcoin out there. I think when people hear... Uh, the 21 million, they simply think that there are still 21 million Bitcoin actually being uh, thrown around back and forth that people have the opportunity to be able to buy. That is no longer the case. We keep hearing week after week after week that institutions are buying up. We bought 15,000 Bitcoin. We bought 28,000 Bitcoin. And this happens over the course of a month. Even if it was over the course of two months, there are multiple companies doing this. And by this point, logically, realistically, we probably have anywhere from uh, is roughly around 5,000 Bitcoin that are being absorbed by very rich people every single day. So that's uh, it's about a good 150,000 per month. And that's like on the low end. That's like actual really low end uh, from what I can tell. On top of that, any type of news that we've gotten before in the past, that interest rates are going to remain low within the United States, of course, also causes people to start getting into Bitcoin a little bit more. But then the idea that the the stimulus relief, uh, rather the printing of more money to be pushed into the economy to be able to buy securities and what have you to keep the economy afloat when the economy should have fallen it's all incredibly bullish for Bitcoin. So the news that we had two days ago was that Bitcoin was near 14,000. It was 13,200 something. Yesterday, the news was that Bitcoin was near 15,000. And today, as it stands right now, of course, the prices have pulled back. There's always a bit of a pullback because this is just how the, the mind works. I'm not really sure. Uh, but we were very, very close to hitting $16,000. This is also mimicking almost to a T. I've been saying it the entire year, and I'm glad that we finally gotten here. Mimicking to a T 2017. If you look at the prices for 2017, around the same exact thing started happening. We are much higher than we were at this point in time in 2017. But what ended up happening was, is that even, I mean, we not only did we not have 19, we didn't have trillions of dollars being printed to be pushed into the economy that was rapidly crumbling. I was going to say slowly crumbling, but rapidly falling apart. 
um we now have all these institutions buying a lot more we have a lot more infrastructure and also i mean just realistically we're also higher up percentage wise in price uh what took place in 2017 around this time is that people were getting ready for the holiday season and other people started telling their friends and family how much money they had made off of this new thing called bitcoin that they had purchased around february and now they had made thousands of extra dollars so uh, and this was also once again without yeah, you, 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 you have to really understand how scarce Bitcoin is, and, and I'll say this until we get to a hundred million dollar Bitcoin, because I still see, and I know a lot of them are bots in the comment section talking about these other coins that you should never be buying. If if, if you see anyone with a comment about fifteen times saying to buy X coin or so and so coin, it's clearly just bots. But a lot of people still try and hype up these garbage coins in the comment section. The point is, um. Bitcoin is going places and is going to continue going a lot higher, especially as the year continues to drag itself on. As you might imagine, this is, of course, the top news story of the day. It says Bitcoin moves towards 16,000 US dollars. Altcoins pick up pace. This one says Bitcoin price prediction. Bitcoin acing. I assume that's racing towards $16,000 high. Bitcoin's chances of hitting 20k by the end of 2020 double to 14%. I assume, I, I think we're going to hit it. Uh, we were extremely close to 16,000. The only thing that pulls us back is some type of fear or the, the idea that other people are going to sell so that we should also sell off in anticipation of their fear so we get the higher sellout point as opposed to the lower sellout point. That's usually all that it is. If people actually use their minds and really understood where all this is going and why the accumulation has picked up at such a rapid pace and why we're getting news that governments are now accumulating Bitcoins themselves, no one would be selling at all. This is the idea that people are constantly trying to uh, make profits or cash in profits. And it's, it, people are going to get burned by this because a lot of the shorts that we've even seen are people betting against the price of Bitcoin and thinking that Bitcoin is going to go back down. They've been wiped out over the last couple of days. All the people who, when Bitcoin was 12000 who had... Uh, who had shorts around $10,000, $11,000, or even the people who were talking about that Bitcoin was going to fall back down to $9,000 when it was at $12,000. They, they can no longer buy Bitcoin at that price. Um, What's this one? Top crypto analyst plots huge Bitcoin breakout, Ethereum's resistance levels, and XRP's attempt to play catch up. Um, XRP at the moment is not doing that great. But neither are many of the other altcoins, while they're performing okay, they're in the green. No one's doing what Bitcoin is doing right now, especially percentage-wise and just even number-wise. I think Bitcoin was like two or $3,000 over the last couple of days, which is completely ludicrous. Ethereum is doing quite okay. I think last time I saw it was at 414. I think that was the last number I remember seeing it at. And this is basically because the news of that... The contract is now open for depositing Ether so that Ethereum 2.0 can activate Genesis block, what have you. It's causing a huge stir in the market because a lot of people were probably like, okay, we'll see it sometime next year. But the fact that we know it's going to happen this year is also, you know, it's not ruffling feathers, but you get what I'm saying. It's causing a lot of excitement. This one says, Fed calling for more stimulus is code for buy Bitcoin. This was said by the Winklevi brother. Um, the economy is not doing well. It's not going to start doing well anytime soon. There are no jobs. The jobs that were there are leaving. There's no help for people from unemployment. There are people don't, don't even forget the fact that in August we were talking about the end of the moratoriums for people, um, who were getting evicted in February and in March, they had a, a thing that stopped people from being able to get evicted. By August, September, that thing had ended. So we now have tens of millions of people just within the states who are now uh, without a home. Don't forget the entire thing that happened on the mortgage as well. There was also a freeze on mortgages. That's also completely stopped right now. I watched something last night where it, it was, it was a, it's not ironic, but it was a bit interesting to watch. This woman who lived in, I don't know, New Jersey or somewhere new, um, she had about like 15 apartments. This is why I said it's a bit ironic, uh, because she was saying how much 19 has devastated her, and a lot of people who live inside of her flats aren't paying rent, or they're simply so-and-so, and she has to pay her mortgage, and she was talking about how down and out she was, but if you, I mean, really take a step back, like, things like that always kind of get me, because it's like, you own 16 apartments, and you don't have any savings, 
it's for for me realistically if i'm if i if i'm buying 5 10 properties at the exact same time i have to make sure that i also have in the bank should my flat be empty for the next 2 years I am still able to pay my land fees, my HOA fees, whatever letters you throw around for that. So I, I, I sat there watching it and you try to feel bad, or at least I try to feel bad, and I go, oh, that's really sad. But then you go like, you own 16 apartments. There was there was nothing that told you maybe save some money for a rainy day. It's the same as I think with that other woman that we saw, what was it, about March, April, May or something like that? The woman in, oh gosh, where was it? I don't remember. It was something I saw on, 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 on the computer. This woman, she was like, 55 years old or something like that. And I think she owned like 12 houses in the countryside somewhere. She was like, no one's paying their rent. And I was like, you own tw- like something like something didn't tell you maybe don't get tw- house number 12 and just save that extra money for it. Like this is why we have the term for rainy day. For those of you who don't know, that's why we have the- like there's always you cannot calculate or say everything is going to be rosy and pink forever. At some point, things are going to go bad because that's life. You have to have the backup money. This is why on the other channel, I have that thing about starting a rainy day fund because so many people don't. And people, I don't know how people can think. It's like my other friend, I'm tangent. My my, my, my friend in New York keeps telling me that his friends are telling him like, yeah, man, I, I, I applied for like 35 jobs and no one's called me back. He's like, because there are no jobs. Everything is shut down. And they're like, yeah, but you know, things are going to open back up. And he talks to them and they're like, yeah, I think I got to move back in with my mother. And he's like, you don't have any savings? No. Oh man, I don't have any savings. And he looks at their Instagram. Looks like people keep buying so excessively. Like, what is the idea of you? And I and I'm I'm worried. I'm very worried of when the cryptocurrency market does go up. I mean, to be fair, we're already going up. Goes up really high to those astronomical crazy numbers. And people start cashing out and people don't save any of it. Because I know a lot of people are gonna have a whole bunch of frivolous, stupid spending things that they're going to be doing. They're going to spend way too much in the house, way too much in the car. They're going to start getting these mortgages that they can't afford. The price of the cryptocurrency market is going to go down because they're going to keep thinking that the prices are going to go up forever. And then they're going to sit there and go, oh, why Why do these things happen to me? Please save. If you if you have not started saving, I implore you to please start today. Like It is probably do this now. Like Make this your Christmas gift to yourself as opposed to buying something that you do not need that you're going to tell yourself that you need for no apparent reason because you're not going to be using the item in two or three months. I don't get it. I don't I, I I don't understand. The entire point is people are in a in dire financial straits right now and this is going to continue because people keep thinking that the I I I don't know that things just won't get worse or that things will always be the exact same as they are and that are not really sure. So take take this entire year, the entirety of this year as one big lesson. Whenever you do cash out Make sure that you start a huge savings account. And even even more so, keep some of your crypto and maybe even just put it onto a site where you can start staking your coins to get a source of passive income as another rainy day fund because there's no help coming. No time soon. I don't know if you have realized that, especially when governments around the world keep printing tr- tons and tons and trillions of dollars. Trillions. It's not even like they're printing like you know, 15 million. It's trillions of dollars equivalent worth of money. And they're just pumping it into stocks and bonds and giving it to companies. You have to understand that at a certain point, the government does not care about you. You have to start caring about yourself. It is absolutely mind boggling how many people are in a desperate situation when it doesn't even have to be that much. Anyway, it's 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 frustrating to me. And this is why I have this channel so everyone can kind of really get it together. We can all make money together, but when it's cash out time, I'll make a video of where to potentially allocate your money, how to make passive income sources. I also have it on the other channel as well because it's like, come on, man. Like, this can't continue any, anymore. Um, and also, of course, in uh, n- New Believer News... Bloomberg TV anchor Tracy Alloway says she is now bullish, wow, on Bitcoin after previously being a disbeliever in the crypto asset. In a newsletter published on the 2nd of November, Alloway highlighted her reasons for becoming a Bitcoin supporter. She said, I have a confession to make. I am now bullish on Bitcoin. I'm bullish on Bitcoin because I'm bullish on cognitive dissonance in a complex society and on people's ability to produce endless narratives for the cryptocurrency, even ones that are at times contradictory. Since its creation back in 2008, Bitcoin has been lauded and promoted as so many things. It's a hedge against inflation, but also financial asset. Bitcoin is a way of 
disintermediating the existing financial system because you can't trust banks, but it's also something that would benefit from a flood of institutional money. Asset managers are diving in. I'm happy that this person finally realized the the or rather understands what Bitcoin is for. I'm glad people finally get there. Uh, this was, of course, uh, very popular news. Anytime that someone who's well-known, I don't know this woman, anytime that, that someone who's relatively well-known gets into the news, I, I, I assume because she's also on Bloomberg, starts believing in Bitcoin, like, stop it. Like, this is so ridiculous. It is abundantly clear. All these rich people are deep, not even nose deep. They're like body deep in the pool. They are completely into Bitcoin at this point. And this is why I also assume that we see the prices are actually constantly moving up higher because they're, they're continuously buying. The more they buy, if we have 150,000 Bitcoin that leaves the market every single month minimum, that's just what I think it is for institutions. And I'll even give you a smidge of like retail investors, everyday normal people who are also buying up as well. You have to understand if Bitcoin is at 12,000 and people see the next morning it's at 13,000, People are going to start buying fragments of Bitcoin. And that also then we are 7.4 billion people on this planet with roughly around 2 million Bitcoin to really go around. Don't forget the other the, the, the news stories that we've been getting this year have been that institutions have been buying 30,000 Bitcoin here, half a billion dollars worth of Bitcoin here. Don't forget that last year, the news that we had is that all the rich people, the Rockefellers and all these other families were buying Bitcoin and storing them in mountains. People, people forget these numbers are also there. Even the, I think we had like a graph two or three weeks ago that showed like who the, the, who the companies were who were buying all the Bitcoin. None of that had like family, um, um, like wealth managing allocation inside of it. It was just like these big companies have bought it. Like, anyway, um, so I think the next five years are going to be chaotically beautifully amazing i think the world's economy is going to continue to crash if we are getting indications from the federal reserve that they think things are going to be bad for the next three years it probably means five years plus in that same exact time if things continue to be bad you can probably expect that bitcoin is going to go higher when bitcoin starts reaching certain thresholds people are going to be throwing everything they have into the market the higher the market goes the more money that gets put inside of it the more money that gets put inside of it the higher bitcoin goes we're already seeing this trend i do not expect it to stop anytime soon i hope you are prepared i hope you have the proper coins in your portfolio I remember people years ago telling me that they owned all these other coins and they would never own Bitcoin. I hope that you see in some way the error in your financial ways because do not get left behind because you are going to get left behind. Anyway, that's all the Bitcoin price, where things are going, bullishness. I'm now a believer uh, news. And without further ado, let us move on. Why is my leg asleep? What did I? I guess I was like, like so much. The you know the blood just is in my fist now. Um, it says Ethereum social sentiment surges as staking starts. As you might expect, a lot of people are quite uh, enthused about the fact that um, we are very near to Ethereum 2.0. Social engagement on social media platforms has completely skyrocketed. And I think there's also news. Is, is this somewhere around here? But not, but, but, no. Um, there's also news that Vitalik Buterin also, I think he just, he allocated, I think, 3,200 Ether into that staking contract that we were talking about yesterday to get the Genesis block activated. So I can only assume at this point uh, that they have enough Ether to be able to activate the actual Genesis block. Um, yeah, so ex exciting times all across the board. Uh, oh, yeah, okay, Ether's at 429. When, when I looked earlier, it was at 414. And as we get closer to the actual, I'm expecting a $600 Ethereum by the time, it's in 25 days, by the time we get to uh, the actual activation of Ethereum 2.0. And I assume there may be a little tiny dip because people are going to start selling because they don't understand what's really going on and don't really see. If if you've seen the other 800 videos before this one, think of how many countries and companies and governments and institutions and banks are building on or using Ethereum in some sort of way. There's going to be a sell-off because people really don't understand that they're going to have that fear-induced selling 
And then the price is probably going to continue to go a lot higher as the actual amount of Ether continues to be constrained. Same exact thing with the amount of Bitcoin that keeps getting thrown into Ethereum. Like all these stuff, all these coins are going to be locked away. And if you have any, you're like, you're, you're basically set. Because the assets themselves are already scarce. And then you make them scarcer by locking them inside of another protocol that then creates more money. Stop it. It's it's just it's just it's just it's nuts. Uh what's this one? Um oh, oh yeah, oh yeah. This is also uh big popular news. Cash app. The Bitcoin friendly mobile payments app from US financial firm Square has reported Bitcoin has overtaken all other revenue sources. Everything else they were making money from, Bitcoin overtook it, making up almost 80% of its entire revenue in the third quarter. In Square's third quarter report, Cash App's Bitcoin-derived revenue, they made $1.63 billion US dollars in three months. It was more than a 1,100% increase when compared to 2019. My friend sent me not this article, but a similar article yesterday, and we were discussing it. Do you understand what it means to have a a business model and you make money from it? Now, imagine adding a word onto your platform. You can buy Bitcoin here, and that overtakes everything else you've set up yourself as a company to make money from. Imagine you imagine you are selling oranges by the road. People buy oranges, people buy so-and-so. You, you, you set up a piece of paper that says, sign your name here. And people start paying you for it. it, it it's kind of that, it's not ludicrous, but it's like Square had a purpose. Bitcoin completely overshadowed that, that entire purpose. In three months, they, weigh, they made 1.6 billion US dollars. And you know exactly what that does. Not even, not even hype up Bitcoin even further for people who didn't know about it before, who I'm sure are going to be reading this news and go, wow, that's a lot of money. I should get into Bitcoin as well. It's other companies. Other companies are going to go, that wasn't even the purpose of their app. The purpose of their app was something completely different. They added Bitcoin, and over the course of three months, they made $1.6 billion. We should do the exact same. Let's offer Bitcoin for sale on our platform in the exact same way. Let's start making extra money on the side. And then everyone else tumbles into it as well. You know how insane that is? This is this is this is very popular news. I, I think stuff like this doesn't really uh, you know get people excited, but it it's fascinating. And this is this is with the only think of the amount of people that you know who are into Bitcoin. It may just be you, it may just be you and maybe one other person, or maybe you know have a little small group of friends. Imagine if everyone you knew was into Bitcoin. Everyone, every single person. Mother, auntie, sister, grandmother, brother, cousin, step, aunt, niece, everyone started buying Bitcoin. How much higher the price would go? Like this is, this is, this is, they made 1.6 billion just with the people who are currently in the market and currently only using Square's cash app. This is going to be big. It's already big. It's going to be major. And I'm... Uh, one of the things I haven't, I haven't mentioned this before. One of the things I'm really excited for is, you know how we saw before that Bitcoin was the eighth largest currency in the world. I think it's currently the the fifth. No, no, no. Sixth largest currency in the world. If, if you look around for it, um, when we get news that Bitcoin's in the top three currencies in the world, oh boy, that's going to be someday, uh, it's going to be something for the, for the market. Anyway, Square made tons of money. Other companies are going to start doing the exact same thing. Eventually, we're, we're going to be able to buy Bitcoin everywhere. Every single place that you can even think of, we're going to be able to do it, even at normal ATMs. I give that about five years. But that's the Square news, and we're going to move on. Next up, in sure news, Coinbase announced support for three new cryptocurrency listings today on its blog. The company also extended trading for three other cryptocurrencies to New York investors. Beginning today, the exchange will allow users to trade Civic, Decentraland, and District 0x. All three cryptocurrencies are based on Ethereum's ERC20, uh, have been on Coinbase Pro since 2018, Coinbase's decision to list these coins on his retail exchange brings the coins to a much larger audience. No one wants these coins. No one's buying Civic. Maybe Decentraland? 
sh I'm sh like shrug shrugging. Uh, District Zero X, not not a chance. The company will now allow New York residents to trade these tokens. They are Zero X, uh, Kyber Network, mm, and Omise Go. Uh, with Omise Go rising in price the last like three weeks, still no Omise Go news. So I'm not really sure why Omise Go continues to rise. Yep, that's the Coinbase news. They keep adding coins that people aren't asking for, people don't want. But alas, they, um, it, eh. uh, tinfoil hat, not even tinfoil hat, just logic hat. Uh, they might be losing money. I know a lot of people have been taking their money off of Coinbase. Uh, and I know that they're probably not doing as well as they would like to do, uh, during rises in prices. Uh, so this may just be them adding other coins to their platform that they think may be popular in an effort to try and make extra money. Because no, <laughs> Civic? Really? Okay. Anyway, that's the Coinbase news. They are adding three new coins, uh, Civic, Decentraland, and District 0X. And if you are in New York, you can now use 0X, uh, Kyber Network, and Omise Go Network. On top of that, there's a lot of um, bad DeFi kind of news floating around out there. This one says, Urine Finance sees disastrous performance. Here's what's to blame. The, co the, the coin is, is garbage. That's what's to blame. This one says, Buggy Code and this compound finance fork just froze $1 million in Ethereum tokens. There's a lot of news like this. There, ha there has been for the last two weeks. It's a whole slew of... Uh, this DeFi platform did this, this DeFi so-and-so, DeFi is not doing well, DeFi prices are going down. A lot of the amazing DeFi coins that we were hearing about just months ago continue to slide in price even as Bitcoin rises and even as other altcoins continue to uh, trek upward in price. They're not doing very well. Depends on where you look. Um, once again, I know people are going to continue putting their money into this. Just try to be smarter than the rest if you can. And um, also in popular news, fake Ripple community emails. I mean, just use your brain. Like if you have a brain, if you're listening to me right now, that means you have a brain. Use it. Fake Ripple community emails have been set up to steal XRP. The XRP team had to send out a tweet encouraging people to stay alert. Use your brains. The tweet said that there was a rise of stolen XRP due to Ripple community email scams. An XRP member received a fake email claiming to be from Ripple, releasing two community programs this month. This is the email address that they are using. Uh, the email detailed that the company was giving out, keyword that the company was giving away, giving out 5 billion XRP. Another email is also asking investors to take part with their XRP. The email seems to be evolving by asking as different things. Um, long story short, the email basically said, um, send us your address and your private key and we'll give you money. Or it said, send us XRP and we'll give you extra XRP. Have you ever been in a situation before where you walked down the street and someone said, give me a dollar and I'll give you 20? Has this ever happened to you? No, and it's never going to happen. So why would anyone ever give you tons of XRP for free? Has there ever been a situation where someone knocked on your door and said, hey, I like your house a lot. Um, I'll give you 15 houses for this one house. Use your brains. It's not that difficult. No one, I think, what, what was it? Uh, that Maybe they don't have the numbers in here. I read somewhere else that apparently millions of dollars uh, we're actually lost in, in a lot of these email type things that have been going on for a while, but I guess now we've reached the, the, the top of it. So people are, you know, telling other people to be aware. That's not how the world works. Why would anyone do that? Why? Why would Brad Garlinghouse or anybody else give you free XRP? Or free Bitcoin or free anything else? It's just, if you have a brain, I hope you're... Mind uses it because it's just a lot of the world we live in, man. It's just, it's surprising more and more every single day. As always, a very special thank you to my Patreon supporters. 
Professor Wally from Gundabai University, Snacky Chan, Tolek Banan, Auspicious Agile and Blockchain, Navarro Williams, David James, Attila the Han, Yasha Harari, Oscar Maldonado, Utopia 569, Moon Man High, XRP, Joshua Vineyard, Martin Stoyo, Nostromo, John Sarson, The Animal Reader, Ebibliophobia, Todd Mullis, Adam Graysick. Moher Maroney, Master Ventures in Thailand, Jared Schneider, Wise Night Owl, 242 to the World, Big Roll Network. Crypto Artist, Cold E3D, Damien Set, Suna, and Richie Rich III, Vlandi Impaler, Paxis, Nick Mangelavori, Anthony Charles, Jim Garner, Jamie Fox, Minton Coins, Mother Hesher, Dan, Kyle Skips, Leg Day, Yes to Crypto, Body Make Boatface, Anytime Fitness, Mars Corner Staff, Arf Medic 17, Bake Me a Cake, Tigger, Amacho, Nisa, On Crypto with Lionel, Crayola, Michelle, URL, and Bolero Bastos. Thank you all very, very much for your support. Thank you to everyone who is a member of the channel, and thank you to everyone who was just here in, in generality. At the moment, Bitcoin is currently at 15,642 US dollars. It is up by nearly 8% over the past 24 hours. Uh, here's the $16,000 area, roughly where we were. Prices are choppily going up higher. There are tons of people who are trying their darndest to sell. And I mentioned before, and we heard many other times before, that once we passed by 14,000, that was all she wrote. Um, we heard that news since around May, and lo and behold, here we are. Okay, Ether just shot up. Uh, that's kind of insane. Uh, it's at 444 US dollars. It was just at 424. And before I started the video, it was at 411 or somewhere around that general number. I assume the excitement is there. Uh, I it's, it's always numbers for me. When we get the exact numbers of how much Ether is going to be staked, that's it. Because we there's going to be a lot. If, if it's going to be the main way to create new Ether, everyone's going to be buying as much Ether as possible to be able to make more money. Uh, someone was asking me in the comment section, am I going to be staking? Absolutely. 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 One, 100%. Um, especially as another like passive income source. Absolutely. XRP is up by 7%. Chainlink is up by 13.87%. Uh, okay. Litecoin is also shooting up as well. There's been no real Litecoin news. I think it's just, I'm not sure. Some type of hype. Uh, maybe more people have had a huge amount of Litecoin over the last couple of years. And therefore now they're all... Getting back into the game. Cardano's up by 14% as well. The entire market's doing extremely well. It's very nice to finally see reality reflecting in our prices. We should have had all this around like April or May. Just to be completely honest with you. We should have had this at the idea that the entire world's economy was collapsing. Uh, that should have been a no-brainer. Lumens is up by 14%. Tezos is up by 12%. Uh, but, but anything else like extremely crazy? IOTA's up by, wow. IOTA's up by 13% on $10 million trading volume. That's nothing. The coin above it has 164 million. They have 10. Bitcoin has, was it 61 million? Billion? Hold on. $70 billion worth of trading volume. IOTA has 10 million. Red flag. Um... Mm -mm -mm -mm. Uniswap is up by 40. Sure, why not? Omise Go is up. Okay, all the DeFi's are now pumping as well. I guess they felt a little left out, as I would as well. The market's looking good. Um, let's see what the rest of the week takes us. Wait, what is it? Happy Friday. Uh, let's see what the rest of the weekend takes us. Uh, just, you know, because logic. I do hope you all enjoyed. I do hope you all are having a great day, a great morning, a great afternoon, a great evening, wherever you are, wherever you might be. I do hope that it is absolutely fantastic. Thank you all once again for watching and or listening. And I will most certainly, especially if the market remains this exciting, I will most certainly be talking to you all soon. I also talk to you all soon when the market's like really boring. So, you know, just what I do. See you.